Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this talk. Um, today, I'm going to talk about how we can combine infrastructure as a code with uh, GitOps and how we can manage a multi-cloud infrastructure. And I will introduce a new concept. And uh, on that way, I will introduce uh, two new tools. Uh, short about myself, uh, my name is Hossein Salahi. Uh, I work as cloud engineer, cloud uh, consultant at Liquid Reply, short about my company. Uh, we are a company based in Germany, and uh, we are highly focused on cloud native development. We help our customer to build, design, build uh, uh, container orchestration platforms, and also to help them, you know, on their way uh, to the cloud, uh, to, to uh, cloud native journey in topics like uh, cloud native development and especially uh, FinOps. Uh, what are my focuses? Uh, like my company, I like to design and uh, build uh, cloud and cloud native infrastructures. I, I'm highly focused on automation. I like to automate boring stuff uh, that I'm daily dealing with them. And I, look, I also like to uh, yeah, to make self, my, myself busy with uh, cloud platforms. I have OpenStack background, and now I'm highly focused on container orchestration platforms. Uh, what I do beside my job, uh, I'm, I've been part of Kubernetes release team since release 122, and I really love it. Uh, I do it beside my job. Uh, as next, let's take a look why, where we are standing when we are talking about multi-cloud infrastructure management. How does it look like these days? Um, I think, let's talk about infrastructure as a code. It's one of uh, DevOps best practices. It's focusing on avoiding you know, envir environmental drifts. Um, it means every time I'm going to deploy the same infrastructure, I'm going to not to face runtime issues, missing dependencies. So, infrastructure as a code is lying on the pillars of um, DevOps. It means it's using Git as a single source of truth, where our code is lying, and we are using uh, GitLab CI CD pipelines to automate the deployment and provisioning this infrastructure, and also keeping, maintaining the lifecycle of these cloud resources. I'm sure most of you are more or less familiar you know, with this picture. We are starting to manage multi-cloud infrastructure, or even against one of these providers. Some of these tools now we have in uh, our landscape, they are neutral, like Terraform, Plumi, and some of them are highly opinionated because they are developed for a specific cloud provider. I'm sure you have come to this point, you are using Terraform to uh, provision an infrastructure, and you are getting this point that Terraform cannot handle all the requirements, cannot tackle all the dependencies I want. So my case, I'm ending up writing really long, terrible, dirty shell script inside Terraform and using AWS CLI to, yeah, to achieve what I want. But this is like really painful. Um, this is uh, this heterogeneous setup that I think most of you, you know from your own companies, I have seen by lots of customers, it's a, at some point, it's really painful. Let's a look what challenge this brings to us. First, as I said, one tool is not a silver bullet to tackle all the requirements. It cannot be, because they are, some of these APIs of the cloud providers, they are highly opinionated. They are developed for their own toolings, and our Infrastructure as a code tools are not talking to the same API all the time because these APIs are changing all the time. Uh, the other challenge, I've personally been dealing with lots of customers. Someone is going and deleting in a VM in AWS stack, and my tool is not reconciling. There's no reconciling working. So if someone deletes, one VM or S3 buckets, the next time I'm going to run to Terraform plan apply, it's going to break because it says, I'm sorry, a VM is missing. I don't know what happened. Someone deleted by mistake. So this is a pain. And such a setup, as we saw, brings complexity for the platform or SRE team, and it puts them 
on the back foot because they are limited. They are limited in terms of resources to deal with such a complex setup. And if like one developer comes with a specific re request, like I want this and that specific cloud resource, please do, uh, do it for me, they cannot handle it. And the other, uh, last but not least, I know from my career, developers are not interested into managing cloud infrastructure because they are, from my point of view, they are our customer. They don't, they don't want to deal with any tooling. They just want to get the resource and get the benefit of it. They don't want to be involved at any uh, part of uh, creation or managing the life cycle. I would like to take you first uh, to a definition of um, GitOps. Let's take a look at what is GitOps about. Let's make a recap. GitOps is born in cloud native. It's the declarative way to get to continuous delivery, continuous deployment. Basically, it's born in Kubernetes, so at the end it means nothing than Kubernetes manifests. The core part of this uh, concept is Git as a single source of truth. All our manifests, all our configuration are lying there. And the other integral, pa integ integral part is the GitOps operator, which is based on Kubernetes uh, operator uh, concept, is a tool that's running on a target cluster and is reconciling all the time you know, with the Git. It's the way how you describe your system. And as soon as there is a push uh, into the Git uh, repo or there is a pull request accepted, the tool gonna detect it and will update all the resources in the target Kubernetes cluster. Um, let's take a look at the tools that we have in the landscape. So Flux and Argosy, they are m most well-known um, tools uh, in uh, uh, CNCF project. High, like widely used uh, by everyone. Uh, but today I'm going to talk about Fleet. Why Fleet? Why I've chosen Fleet? Uh, Fleet is a GitOps uh, engine from SUSE Ranger. They have this mentality in their mind that SUSE Ranger is the central platform for managing not only the workload of, on top of Kubernetes cluster, but also managing many clusters at a scale. So this makes it like really nice uh, a uh, tool to give it to SRE team to manage huge multi-cloud uh, uh, um, setup. Short about uh, Fleet, like the, the other GitOps um, operators, it has a controller uh, which is running uh, in, uh, in a, a Kubernetes cluster. And this, this uh, uh, controller is all the time you know, reconciling you know, with the Git and checking the state of the Git. And as our classical uh, CI part, you know, as soon as you know, uh, a developer uh, makes changes you know, in a Helm chart or container image, uh, it will be built by our uh, CI CD pipeline. It will be pushed to the artifactory. And one of the features like just came out uh, in Fleet is that Fleet is also able you know, to check the state of the uh, artifactory to see which images are lying there. If there's an update, it can detect it, but it won't be applied till the user, uh, uh, like uh, more specifically, allows it. And at the left side, we have our Donison cl uh, clusters. So in terms of Fleet, Donison clusters are our target clusters, they can be bundled into different type of uh, groups, uh, stage-based, uh, uh, provider-based, and uh, that's how you, know, you can uh, deploy um, Kubernetes application in scale. Uh, so at the end of the day, there is a one agent uh, from Fleet, which should be run you know, at the target cluster, and that's how you, uh, so the, the, the agent is always in contact with Fleet controller and uh, like asking, give me a job to do, give me a job to do, and Philippe says, okay, there are uh, changes in the Git repo, so uh, yeah, update the uh, uh, target uh, cluster. Uh, so uh, like short about the uh, Fleet bundle, Fleet bundle is nothing than uh, a Kubernetes manifest or Helm chart or uh, customized configuration. Uh, I'd just like to point to uh, this tweet from uh, Casey Hightower from 2019, where he envisioned not only deploying uh, Kubernetes workload using uh, GitOps on Kubernetes, but also managing infrastructure using the same concept. How, 
how we can achieve this? How we can achieve managing infrastructure using GitOps? So we have to take a look at the principles of GitOps, which is declarative semantic. So we have to, we have to be able to define cloud resources with the same semantic. And that's where we are going to benefit the Kubernetes operator, which is the approach to implement this concept. Uh, so based on uh, nothing than X, you know, extending Kubernetes API uh, using CRDs. One of the tools uh, 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 to, to, to achieve this goal is uh, Crossplane, is based on the same concept, and uses the same extension of the API, and it enables us to define managed resources with CRDs and create highly opinionated uh, controllers for different cloud providers with Crossplane. So having such a tool which enables us to also define our infrastructure using uh, uh, custom resources, it creates an opportunity. We are not always interested into creating Kubernetes cluster. We are sometimes our applications, they need to talk to other services. And why not taking the benefit of managed services from cloud providers like S3 Bucket, uh, Message Queue, Message uh, uh, Pub, um, or uh, uh, database like Aurora or uh, uh, Postgres. So this tool enables us to create a self-managed layer. So enables the developers just to use the same API to talk to cloud, cloud providers and define the dependencies. And recently they introduced uh, a new project uh, called TerraJet. TerraJet enables us uh, to use the, the existing uh, Terraform providers to to build cross-plane providers. So we're using the underlying existing providers to, to benefit uh, the, the existing ones, not to write the new ones. Let's take a look at the uh, cross-plane building block. At the heart of this uh, uh, concept is composite resource. It's nothing than the way how we, it enables us to, to create the schema of our uh, cloud resources. This is, a, this is exactly how when we want to create and manage resources, uh, it it's, uh, defines how this managed resource looks like. The other important uh, uh, component uh, is uh, composite resource definition, similar to CRD, but a bit different. It's how we define the type and the schema of this uh, composite resource. Actually, it enforces all the time when we are creating um, a claim, so I will talk later about it. A every time we are creating, a, we want to create a managed resource, this is uh, um, the composite resource definition to its uh, enforcing the semantic and type of the resource. Composition is nothing than one-to-one -one mapping between the managed resources in terms of cross-plane and uh, the real cloud resources. It's the, the, the component knows, okay, when I want to create an RDS instance, I need to talk to exactly the cloud, real cloud resource. And the provider is similar to Terraform provider, so it's how you know, you're talking to the, any specific cloud provider. There's a controller running, and your Kubernetes cluster is uh, able to talk to your uh, target uh, provider. So imagine such a concept enables us to create the self-managed service uh, platform. At one side, we have the dev team. They, they don't really care about what's happening at the background. It's like, let me give example of persistent volume claim and persistent volume. Persistent volume in terms of storage class, backend storage are mostly managed by SRE or platform team. And mostly developer team, they have no idea or they don't want to be involved at all about what's happening in the background. So they just want to create a claim, like persistent volume claim, and Crossplane will take care of uh, creating the real cloud resources. This is a great opportunity just to uh, put both of this team on the same concept and the same platform, and uh, this is... Uh, Let's the uh, enables the, the the platform SRA team just focus on the background and taking care of the definition of resources or creating configuration or a specific, uh, yeah, bundling of cloud resources. And at the end of the site, dev people can easily uh, use uh, and create resources. 
How does it look like? Uh, one of these custom resources. Uh, this is an example of a Cloud SQL instance from GCP. It's nothing than a Postgres. So this is like the, the claim, and at the end, it's going to be a Cloud SQL uh, uh, database in GCP. Uh, so now we know Elite and Crossplane. Let's put them together. Imagine the first photo I showed you. We had a heterogeneous infrastructure management platform with different tools for different uh, cloud providers. As I said, some of them are highly opinionated. We have one central commodities cluster, Fleet is running, and uh, at the same time, Crossplane is deployed. Fleet is taking care of deploying Crossplane, so if you want to change something in terms of uh, Crossplane version configuration, it will use the same concept the configuration are relying in the Git, and as soon as you change something in the configuration of Crossplane, uh, Fleet's going to detect it and it will update uh, the Crossplane. So this enables us to talk to one single API, a universal API, which is Kubernetes, in a declarative way. We know YAML manifests. In the same way, we can create cloud resources. So this saves us from the hustle of using different languages, different tools, and just to talk one API and get the benefit of uh, yeah, the declarative manner. I will uh, show a short demo, uh, but before jumping to the demo, uh, I will just talk about uh, how, uh, what I will show in this demo to you. So uh, my central cluster is running uh, uh, in uh, AKS cluster, and uh, Fleet and Crossplane are deployed, and uh, I will show how we can create a JKE cluster, uh, and then uh, going to be a Fleet uh, agent running there, and at the same time uh, going to be uh, uh, Cl uh, Cloud SQL Postgres uh, created. Uh, shortly, I will show how the Git repository looks like. Uh, um, so, as I said, uh, I'm using um, the, the fleet to deploy crossplane. So this is how uh, it's defined so using the custom resource definition uh, uh, concept of fleet. So uh, I'm just like, uh, yeah, pointing this to uh, Helm repository and saying, okay, I want this chart with this version, and please deploy specific cloud provider packages uh, when you're deploying crossplane. Uh, also, I would show how these claims or uh, um, custom resources they look like in terms of GCP. So, so this is a uh, like really simple hello world example how you can create a JK cluster using Crossplane. So yeah, uh, it's uh, simple, straightforward. And I will also just go and show the Cloud SQL. We saw it in the slides. So let's switch. I will just zoom a bit. Can anyone see it? Okay. Uh, let's take a look uh, at Crestplane. Okay. So the Crestplane is running. So as I said, I have deployed two. Providers, AWS and uh, GCP, they're, uh, yeah, as you can see, they're running and they're, we can check the state of uh, uh, the providers. Just short, you know, K standing for kubectl just alias. Um, so, as you can see, both are the uh, providers are deployed, they're healthy. And uh, as next, I would like to, I would just like to create a uh, secret. To talk to be able to talk to the GCP, it's yeah standard JSON uh, secret, just like formulated inside a Kubernetes, Kubernetes secret. So uh, I'll just have a uh, just let's take a look. Setup provider. I just have a shell script. It deploys the secret. Nothing uh, fancy. So it's already there. Nothing changed. And uh, I will just show you another Git repo, which will be just for the sake of this demo. Uh, so 
one of the custom resources from uh, Fleet, so I'm just defining another um, yeah, Git repo. Uh, with Fleet, you can always you know, uh, specify specific passes, and I'm just pointing this to JKE cluster and Cloud SQL. Just I have another shell script, which actually registers this repo. I'm just going to use it. So it has been created. Uh, so let's take a look at what's happening there. When I uh, okay, that's it. Okay, that doesn't look good. Ah, okay. Get repos. Okay. Uh, short about what's happening right now. Uh, this bootstrap, yeah, we can ignore it because it's for the initial setup. But the second one, you can see, you know, this this new um, a Git repo I just uh, deployed. Yeah, so uh, the, the hash, you know, it's standing for the hash commit, so uh, that's coming directly from the Git repo. And what's happening, you see, it's saying it's not ready because it's now talking to the cloud provider. It's trying to create two resources. So as you can see now, it's trying to create. Most probably, I will just jump into the real uh, managed resource, but now it's trying to create a node pool for the Kubernetes cluster, and also trying to create um, Cloud SQL. So it won't satisfy till it manages both the resources, and and then you will see it will just uh, yeah be idle. So in the meantime, uh, we can take a look at the real. Uh, Clusters, what's happening there? So it's uh, in the provisioning state, so it's, it's synced, but it's not ready. Um, we can also take a look at the um, Cloud SQL. Same, uh, it's synced, but uh, still trying to create, I can jump into the GCP console, just need to refresh. Yeah, it's spinning up the cluster. Most probably, yeah, it's deploying, and if you look at, take a look at the nodes, yeah, it's starting to provision the nodes, it will take a while. And uh, let's take a look at the SQL part. Yeah, it's already there, it's already there and running. So. This, uh, this state of uh, reconciling gonna continue till both of the resources are healthy and running and uh, then it will, just as I said, uh, it will be satisfied till we make the next change you know, in the Git uh, repo. I will just jump back to the slides. So uh, I would like to summarize uh, my call. Um, so, as, as we saw, this creates a great opportunity to have a common API, common language, and the same workflow for both of the dev and SRE or platform teams. They can use the same Git repo, and everything gonna be gateway using the pull request, and the, it's gonna be really transparent for both sides. Which resources have we deployed? What is the state? Because everything is declarative, relying on the Git repo. And the principle of uh, least uh, privilege. So it's so my own experience from my customers. Don't give kubectl or any kind of CLI to the to the dev team, because this kind of end to chaos. Uh, so Git is the best place to uh, direct them. So please use the Git. Create your resources. We're gonna see. We're gonna gateway. We're gonna uh, look through the pull request and keep their fingers away from any kind of command line. <laughs> so um, as we saw, this one will help us you know, to avoid having different uh, setups with different configurations because everything is declarative, everything is uh, managed with uh, Git, so we can always uh, see the state and uh, always the, the GitHub operator is reconciling uh, with the Git and the state of the system is up to date. And this is also a good opportunity for managed day two operations like uh, deploy, enforcing you know, policies like LPA or Kaverna or network policies or uh, any monitoring, observability you know, tools can be deployed with the same concept. 
At the end of the talk, I would just like to uh, um, uh, just to say we have two more talks um, in the KubeCon uh, from uh, three of my uh, great colleagues. Uh, please uh, join our other talks and come to our booth. Uh, let's connect and uh, great to see you there. Thank you. Are you willing to take questions? We have sure. a few minutes. Sure. Any questions? Anybody? None? Okay, here we go. Hey, hi. This is Anil. How uh, cluster APA versus fleet uh, uh, in the even like, I know class plane, I got it, but cluster APA versus fleet, any insights you can give? Um, uh, to be honest, I, I, I took a look. Uh, but uh, I think there's not that much, you know, like not that much movement, you know, in regarding of cluster API. But I can see a good opportunity there that it can be also integrated. Yeah. yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Anybody else? Just a question about the Terra, uh, the TerraJet. Terra Did you ever try uh, with OpenStack? Because it actually, is a one of the uh, provider that is missing for the cross play. Um, uh, to, to, to that end, uh, yeah, I, I was just checking a couple of days ago for this. I, 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 I think I saw example for uh, the main cloud providers. I was looking for uh, KVM or Libvirt or OpenStack. Unfortunately, they are still in the, you know, in the beginning, uh, so I, I hope there are going to be more uh, movements there. But yeah, that's, uh, I think I, it, it would be great, but I think it's coming. I sense a theme. <laughs> There's, yeah. It's almost like GitOps is new or something. Anybody else? All right, awesome. Thank you so much for your My talk. My pleasure. Thank wonderful. you.